Good morning, and welcome to Worship for Nobleton Schomburg Pastoral Charge. My name is Pat Edmonds, and I am a licensed lay worship leader. Welcome to my home. When I moved to this condo five years ago, I had no idea that my bedroom office would become a temporary church sanctuary, but here we are. This is a very special Sunday, Thanksgiving Sunday, although every day should be a day of giving thanks to God our Creator. This is also the season of creation in which we give thanks for the beautiful world in which we live. I encourage you to participate in the service wherever you are by reading with me the words in bold print and joining in the sing-along hymns. As we worship today, we acknowledge the history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the land of the Indigenous people of this area. We seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations as we live, work, and worship upon traditional territory. Our Christ candle has been lit. In a world that can be frightening and chaotic, we light a candle of hope. In a world where the way is uncertain, may this light of Christ show us the way. And our opening hymn today comes from Voices United number 516, Come, you thankful people, come.
Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Thanksgiving is not just a moment. It's not just a day. It's not just a season. Thanksgiving is an action to be lived always. We gather together today as people of God to sing, to pray, to give thanks. We gather to worship the one who is with us all our days, the one who created us, provides for us, and is ever with us no matter where we are. So, as we gather today, let us give thanks to our Creator and all creation. Let us worship God. And our opening prayer we shall say in unison. Please join me. Holy One, as orange globes fill the pumpkin patch, as the landscape is painted with reds and gold, we are filled with gratitude. We are thankful for the earth that is alive around us, for families and friends that give us life, for all that makes life good. May we give our thanks freely so all around may feel your presence and give thanks to you. Amen. For our confession today, I thought I would introduce you to a new hymn called the Hymn of Confession and Forgiveness, and it is entitled, Thank You for the Blessings of Creation. Each line echoes, so feel free to join in. Blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Forgive us, God, for the harm we cause. Forgive us, God, for the harm we cause. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Help us. Blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Help us save your sacred earth. Help us save your sacred earth. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Thank you for the blessings of all creation. Let us pray. Open our hearts and our spirits. Enable us to receive with new understanding today's scripture and message. May your words of love draw us closer to you as we come with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Today's reading from the book of Joel was written during a very hard time in the history of the Hebrew people. There had been no rain for a long, long time, and the crops were very poor. Then came grasshoppers to eat what little grain they did have. But still the people sing a song of thanksgiving, trusting that the rains will eventually come and that God is looking after them. They sing a song of praise as if the rains that they long for have already come. This is true thanksgiving. 
Let us listen then to the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 21 to 7. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain, as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. And today's New Testament scripture is a very well-known passage. It is often referred to as the lilies of the field passage. Please join me in this responsive paraphrase of this passage, Matthew 6, verses 25 to 33. Jesus encourages us to trust in God, saying, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet our God in heaven feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of them. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone and tomorrow is gone, will God not much more clothe you O you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, What shall we wear? For those who have no faith in God run after all these things, and God who is in heaven knows that you need them. Thanks be to God for the words from the Holy Book. I also found this modern-day paraphrase of Matthew 6. Perhaps we can relate better to it in this 21st century and our current situation. It goes like this. Therefore, do not worry. How much is our bank balance? Or where's the leadership of tomorrow? Or What's our organizational plan? For it is those without faith who strive for these things. God knows that you need them. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When I told my husband the title of my message today, he called me a hypocrite. He has always said 
that if I didn't have anything to worry about, I'd worry about that. But maybe I am just the person who should have studied these passages and grappled with this message, for who needs it more than I? There is a story told of a woman who for many years had trouble going to sleep. She was always worried that a burglar would break in while she was sleeping. One night, her husband heard a noise in the house, so he went downstairs to investigate. When he got there, he did indeed find a burglar. Good evening, said the man of the house. I am so pleased to see you. Come upstairs and meet my wife. She has been waiting ten years to meet you. But Jesus says, Do not worry. Don't worry about what you will eat or drink, or about your body what you will wear. Life is more than food. The body is more than clothing. Don't worry. Besides, what good would it do? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? For the average person, and most of us fall into that category, 40% of our worries are about things that will never happen. 30% of our worries are about things that have already happened, the past. 12% of our worries are about criticism by others, which is mostly untrue and mean. 10% of our worries are about health issues, which only get worse with stress and worry. 4% of our worries are about real events that will happen, but we cannot change anyway. And finally, only 4% are about real events upon which we can act. I'm sure Jesus never had access to statistics like these. However, in light of these facts and figures, his advice certainly seems sound for any age or generation. In fact, not only is it very good advice, it is very good news. We don't have to worry because we are taken care of by our Creator in heaven. We can relax. We can be at peace because 96% of our worries are out of our hands. They are in God's hands. 96% of the time we worry, we can give it over to God. And it's God's responsibility then to lose sleep and wring hands, not ours. You may wonder, as I did initially, why this passage was in the lectionary for Thanksgiving, rather than a more traditional passage of thankfulness. Well, the answer is very clear. You see, we can either be worried or thankful. We cannot be both at the same time. If we thank God for all our blessings, how can we at the same time be worried about what we don't have? If we have faith that God will lead and guide us along his way, how can we worry about what will happen next? If we believe in resurrection and eternal life, how can we worry about dying? A good practice is to once a day consciously surrender a worry to God. When we surrender that worry to God, we are free. We are free to give thanks for what we have without worrying about what we don't have. We are also free to use the gifts we have in God's service without worrying about the gifts and talents we don't have. 
Not only does worrying prevent us from fully giving thanks to God for all we have, worrying also robs us of the joy that should be ours. God calls us to live with joy. We are created to be joyful people. But we cannot be joyful if we are in a constant state of worry. Worry drags us down. It saps our energy. It distracts us from the things that bring joy to our lives. Does this mean we are to live our lives in a happy-go-lucky state of never-never land like Peter Pan? Of course not. There are things to be concerned about. We need to be concerned about our children and grandchildren, where they are and whether they are safe from harm. We need to be concerned about looking after our personal affairs, paying our bills, keeping our debt under control, saving for retirement. We need to be concerned about our neighbors, those we know personally and those we will never meet, so we are able to offer a helping hand when needed. We need to be concerned about our community, that it is a safe place to live, work, and relax. We need to be concerned about our country, that we exercise our right to vote knowledgeably when the opportunity arises. We need to be concerned for the environment so it can be enjoyed by future generations. You know, we do not inherit the land from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children and our grandchildren. Are you beginning to see the difference between a worry and a concern? All these concerns are things we can do something about. They are in the 4% of events we can act upon. The other 96% are God's worries. These are ours. God expects us to be concerned and act. God expects us to work at making a difference. God expects us to use our time and energies being concerned about the things over which we do have some control. But how can we stop worrying about the other 96% that we cannot control? The answer is simple. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Don't worry about anything. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking with a thankful heart. This is the surrendering I spoke of a few minutes ago. Surrender these worries to God in prayer. Ask God for what you need. The truth is that God knows what we need even before we ask it. God is aware of our needs as much as we are probably more so. God's desire is to meet our needs in a way that will benefit us and benefit the world in general. At the heart of this issue is the basic question of trust. How much do we trust God? Do we really believe that God cares and that God will meet our needs when we ask in prayer? Do we trust that much? Let's review what Jesus says in today's passage from Matthew. If God can look after the birds in the air and the plants in the fields, how much more is God able to look after his children, children made in God's image? I know there are people worshiping today who have trusted in God to look after them, who have had God speak clearly to them about the path they should take. And there are those who have felt the touch of God's hand as their needs were being met in ways that they never imagined or thought possible. 
There are so many examples. God hears our needs. We don't need to worry. When we give our worries over to God, we are free to live the joyful existence God intends for us. Not only are we called to live with joy, we are called to live thankfully. If we live with joy, we cannot help but live with thanks. If I were to ask each one of you today to mention something for which you are thankful, your answers might be very much the same as the ones I received from children when I taught Sunday school and elementary school. Health, family, friends, food, shelter, etc. That's why I was intrigued by this list that I came across recently. And I'm sorry, I don't know the original source. It's just one of those things floating around in cyberspace. It goes like this. When I pay taxes, I am thankful I have an income. When I clean up the mess after a party, I am thankful that I am surrounded by family and good friends. When my clothes fit a little snug, I am thankful I am well fed. When the lawn needs mowing, windows need cleaning, and gutters need fixing, I am thankful I have a home. When I hear complaining about the government, I am thankful that we have freedom of speech. When I find a spot at the end of the parking lot, I am thankful I am capable of walking and that I have been blessed with owning a car. When I have a huge heating bill, I am thankful that I am warm. When the lady beside me in church sings off key, I am thankful that I can hear well. And finally, when I am weary and have aching muscles at the end of the day, I am thankful that I have been capable of working hard. Please remind yourselves of this one when you are again able to host a church supper or rummage sale. God gives us many blessings. God takes care of us. When we worry and live our lives in fear and anxiety, we don't even notice our blessings. This Thanksgiving, let us take time to notice how we are being taken care of. Let us make a conscious effort to surrender our worries to God. Let us make every day a Thanksgiving day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Although we are unable to pass the offering plate during virtual services, we thank all of you for your continued support of the mission and work of the Pastoral Charge and the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada. We thank you for your gifts of time, treasure, talents, and commitment this week. Thanks to all of you for joining us today and for everyone who helped put this service together. Let us conclude this time of thanksgiving with a prayer. Please join me in dedicating our offering. For what we receive, make us truly thankful, O God. For what we have shared and done for others this week, make us thankful too. Grateful for all we are, and for all we may become, we commit to living thankful, thanks-filled lives. God of all. Amen. Let us pray now for the people of God's world, and we will conclude by saying together the Lord's Prayer. As we gather together for Thanksgiving celebrations, in person or virtually, may we be mindful of those who are lonely, those who are friendless,
those who are forgotten. As food is cooked and shared this week, may we be mindful of a mother who cradles her hungry child and work for ways to share food around the world. As we go for a walk in the fresh, crisp outdoors and enjoy the freedom to do so, may we remember all those held captive by violence and war, by addiction and pain, by brokenness and despair. Rather than simply speaking words of thanks and then returning to life as normal, may our compassion be intensified our concern broadened, our hearts enlarged with your grace and love. As this pandemic continues, we pray for those suffering from isolation, illness, or loss of a loved one. We pray for those whose role it is to care for others, health care workers, first responders, ministers, educators, and caregivers. May they feel your presence as they serve others in your name. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever amen please join me in our closing hymn today which comes from voices united number 236 now thank we all our God. Let us go out now as God's thankful people, 
thankful that God forgives us and encourages us to begin again. Thankful for God's unfailing, everlasting love. Thank you full for a faith that will not let us go. Thankful for a community that journeys with us. Thankful for a ministry of service in God's world. Let us go now into the world with thanksgiving in our hearts to change our world as God has changed our lives. And may God, our Creator, Jesus, our guide and friend, and the ever-present Holy Spirit bless all our ministries until we gather again. Amen.